Namaskar, everyone, and thank you for joining us on this Thursday morning here in Trinidad. It's a Guruvar in the Indian calendar. It's the day of the teacher. Today, when we honor the teacher, and it's the day of the week, literally, Guruvar. For those of you who, in the meditation, find your head is going down or the body going down, it is only because you have not revitalized your body properly. You should be in charge of your posture. So that's why it's entirely necessary, either before the meditation or during the initial phase of the meditation, to ensure (laughs) that your horse your camel is in good order. Your vehicle. Not the motor car. <laughs> the horse or the camel, a living one. The body. You have six chakras to which you can channel energy. Have you learned that? Have you learned how to experience these energy centers? You can't experience them without giving attention to where they are, understanding the energies that feature there, understand how the body is equipped to align to these chakras, and how you can channel energy through each one. But you need the power of manas. The power of mind, focus, will, and directed thought through these centers. So first you need to find them. First you need to be aware of them. First you need to feel them. They need to be activated. And that's why I sit with you. That's why I give you an exposure to my presence that you can catch this. But catching is not as easy as it's said. It requires receptivity. It requires transforming your nature, moving away from human. You're not human. You know, some people say, I'm only human. No, of course not. (laughs) You're divine. You're divine. Divine means that you are centered in God consciousness. And you have a subtle body, a sukshma sharir, through which you can direct energy to any part of you. That's what I teach. I teach that you have a system of chakras and nadis through which you can direct energy when you're aligned to the kundalini power, the goddess power. When you learn to align to her, she is the energy of the universe. When you learn to align to her, she, we call her she, simply because she is the creative one. The whole universe is in her womb. It's created from her womb, so to speak, metaphorically. She's the goddess of creation. She has not only created this universe, but she sustains it with her energy. Some call her Prakriti. Doesn't matter what you call her. Kundalini is the energy within the individual, the chakras. And always remember that the crown chakra is a destination. It is not a chakra that you channel through. You have six chakras to channel through. That is the the screen, the source. And she is along the whole column, energetically speaking. (laughs) She's in your second chakra. She's in your root chakra. She's in your navel chakra. She's in your heart chakra. She's in your throat chakra. She's in your brow chakra. And every chakra is important. 
Shall we leave out some? No. Because you will find that everyone can keep the body healthy. If you direct energy through every chakra, you keep that area healthy. You have the quantum power in your being. Learn it. Learn to tap into these energy centers. Learn to understand them. Learn to experience them, to be awakened to them. And learn to, to manage the physical body through them. That's the power you have. So how can you sit to meditate when the, your body, your, the human animal, is not teamed, is not energized, and put to rest? You have the power to detach from it. In yoga, we call it pratyahara, the power to withdraw your energies from the senses. And as potentially says, you begin the inner focus. It's called dharana. Begin the inner fo focus. It may not be perfect, but you stay with the dharana until it becomes dhyan. Dhyan is an unbroken stream of focus. And Patanjali says, if you have the dhyan unbroken, you will have a chance to experience total balance. But that only happens when you center center, 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 deeper within your consciousness. And every true master would tell you, you need a guide on the journey. At a certain stage, you will find your inner guide. But when you cannot tap into your inner guide perfectly, listen to the words of the outer guide. Be energized by the presence. And use that model of the outer guide to learn how to center in your inner guide. Wake up to your Guru Tattwa. <laughs> the Guru Gita says it. We chanted it today. You'll be a fool. Murhaste. You'll be a fool if you don't understand what Guru Tattwa is. It's a whole hymn telling you how to find Guru Tattwa. It says, if you meditate upon the guru, you become the guru. Shall it be more clear than that? Shiva says that this body is nothing but kundalini shakti. Pinde. It says, in the pinda of the body is the kundalini shakti. And he says, give attention to hamsa, the breath. And work the breath until you have the awareness of Soham. Until you begin to focus on So, the inner self first, not Hum first. When you're ignorant, you're operating in Hamsa, body first, the universe outside. When you begin to become more aware, it turns to Soham, the awareness turns to Soham, the divine inside, and the physical is outside. And he says, follow the Bindu path if you want to go beyond form, Rupa Titam. Follow the Bindu path if you want to go beyond this creation, beyond form. Follow the Bindu path, the Bindu path, Bindu path. That's why we need a guide. The guide teaches us how to follow the Bindu path. So please take care of your physical bodies. It's important. Watch what you eat. Watch what you feed the body, rather. <laughs> because you're not, the, you, you're not the body. Watch what you feed the body. What you choose. What your hand picks up from your plate. All the processed foods. My God, your liver and your kidneys, your whole system will, will be challenged. Why don't you eat things that are full of life? Things that are only cooked as necessary. And eat to live, don't live to eat. Eat of vitality. Don't waste. Don't waste the vitality through eating the wrong foods. Exercise. Move your body. It's designed to move. All the meridians are designed to help you to move. 
to energize you. The nadis, the chakras, they allow beautiful flowing movements that revitalize you. The breath is extremely important, pranayama. Give attention to yourself, to your entire self. Clean up every area. Clean up the emotions. Don't stay in the dark emotions. They affect the body badly. Don't stay with a scattered mind. You overheat the brain. <laughs> Take care of this body. Take care of the inner body too. Clean up the space and you will have the best experience of not only meditation, but activity. <laughs> My intention is not to preach to you. My intention is to <laughs> inspire. <laughs> I hope I didn't come through like a, like a preacher. <laughs> no, I'm not a preacher, man. I try to inspire you. I live what I what I say. Let me guide you along the way. That's my real joy, just to help people to wake up. Buddha, the awakened one. Remember what he said? Are you an angel? No, I'm no angel. Are you a deity? No, I'm no deity. Then who are you? I'm the awakened one. Be awakened. Be awakened. You don't need to be any deity or angel or anything else, or human. <laughs> Just be awakened. Be awakened to all that you are and flow with the energy of the universe. Have a blessed Thursday, everyone, wherever you are. It's a wonderful world if you can only see it, but it's a cruel world if you don't see it. <laughs> be wise. <laughs> The Bible says that wisdom is the greatest thing. And with all I getting, get understanding. Be wise. No, it's good.